So with this selection of readings, Aristotle is continuing the work that we looked at uh, with the excerpts in, from book one. As, you know, as with these other philosophers, these ancient Greek philosophers, he's asking this question, what is a happy life? Now he says, uh, you know, it's not in this, you know, remember if you remember from the, uh, book one, it's not in sensuality, it's not in honor. It's rather in, in contemplation. It's rather uh, in, you know, developing what it means to be human. Now, uh, you know, that left us with some questions, perhaps, but, you know, in this, uh, from this excerpt in book two, he's going to elaborate more on what he means here. Uh, now, to be clear, for Aristotle, he, you know, he's asking, what does it mean to live this good life? And this answer is going to involve the virtues. It's going to be the habits that make one excellent, right? And this excellence is going to be understood in terms of the kind of thing that you are. Okay? And thinks it's uh, found, he starts out right from the beginning, found in uh, either, you know, the, the, you know, there's two main kinds of excellence for him, uh, excellence for the intellect and moral excellence. So, he's telling us that uh, our happiness, the good life, is found in the habits that we develop. Okay. So what habits are important for Aristotle? What habits do you have to develop? Now Aristotle is really clear. He said that the virtues have pleasure and pain as their object. And you're supposed to, you know, the virtuous actions are the ones that uh, cultivate the most pleasure. Now, this might sound weird given what he just had to say about Sardanopolis in the excerpts of book one, but, uh, you know, he's not pointing, he doesn't mean pleasure and pain just simply in, in terms of sensuality, right? That would just be for the body. If all we were bodies, then yeah, you are probably just, you know, go be Sardanopolis, sure. But we're not just bodies, right? We're also minds, we're also emotion. So you have to develop those habits that result in the greatest, you know, that, that, that result in this pleasure, this state of well-being overall, when all three, at least the three parts of you, are working well. Right? Where you, you're developing a pleasant life, a good life. Okay, so how do you figure this out? Well, you know, some habits, it's not hard to see this, some habits are very much excessive, right? Where uh, they get too much of what you're aiming at. So, you know, a really great way to start thinking about this in terms of food, right? And that's just, this is just the body, right? This is just the body. But the, you know, there, there, are other, there are other habits to deal with the mind and, and emotions as well. So, you know, it's really easy to think about a habit of excess of food, right? It's, it's you know, the all-you-can-eat buffet and staying there for six hours, right? And until somebody finally tells you, you need to go. You have eaten us out of business, right? <laughs> that would be one habit that's in the excess. And not just like one instance, but like doing that all the time. That's in the excess. A deficiency, there are habits for deficiency as well. Right? So we can think about not enough food, right? or not eating at all. If you want to put this in terms of just pure caloric intake, right? just in terms of calories, right? in excess would be what? 4,000. Or 6,000, right? Let's say 6,000 calories, right? which is actually not that hard to do with today's diet. 6,000 calories. And a deficiency would be zero calories, right? You'd die pretty quickly if you did that. Or even you might just say 1,000 calories. A thousand calories is probably too little. Okay. Well, to find the right habit, you have to find the relative mean. Now, this isn't the absolute mean. The absolute mean is you know what's equal distance between those two. So if we say six uh, six thousand, did we say yeah six thousand or yeah say six thousand calories was the excess and one thousand calories is uh, you know too little is the deficiency, then the absolute mean would be what uh, three and a half thousand calories. That's the absolute mean. Well, that, that's probably not right. right? 3,500 calories is probably still too much. What you have to find is the relative mean. Right? The relative mean is going to take practice. It's going to take experience. It's going to take a lot of thought and a lot of, you know, for lack of a better word, scientific investigation. you got to take good records and know what you're doing. Okay? So the... Uh, you know, for somebody my size and my age uh, to, you know, either maintain or lose weight, I have to have about 2,000 calories, 2,000 calories a day. And, of course, it matters what I have, too, but, you know, we can, th those are other habits as well. So, um, <clears throat> you know, the relative mean 
has to be found. It's this golden mean, right? That's what he calls this golden mean. It has to be figured out. You have to sit down and say, okay, so here's what I've done. What's the result? Is this better or worse in terms of pleasure and pain? So the habits that you have to develop are ones that you uh, either develop through your own experiences or maybe you rely upon the experiences of others, right? Um, now, virtue ethics, what Aristotle is talking about, virtue ethics is still objective, and we'll get to that in a second. But there is still some, uh, you know, there's going to be some differences between individuals. I mean, not, that doesn't mean that they're just completely out of bounds, right? I mean, you can just do whatever you want. No, no, that's not the case, right? Nobody can have 10,000 calories a day and be fine, right? They're probably going to keel over real fast. Nobody can have just 20 calories a day and be fine. They're probably going to keel over real fast too. So there are always going to be limits. And the, rel the relative mean, there's going to be some differences. But it's also all always going to be within boundaries as well. Aristotle talks about states... Capacities and feelings. I mean, feelings are pretty straightforward. That's easy to understand. Anger, sadness, uh, joy, pleasure. Right? These are you know, your emotional reactions to, to what happens around you. Uh, this is neither good nor bad. Right? Uh, first of all, whether you have these emotions is not in your control. You're a feeling thing. You can't stop that. <laughs> you know, it's capacities. Capacities are, you know, that by which you have these feelings, right? Uh, Aristotle's day, I'm not sure what they thought was responsible for feelings, but today, you know, we, we look towards the brain and the chemical inter interactions in the brains, in, in our brains. Uh, you know, our capacities are by which we even have the feelings to begin with. This is also neither good nor bad. This is also not in your control. You can't control whether you have these capacities. Uh, but there are states in addition to that. Now, states are what, uh, you know, is by that, that, that how we react to certain situations, okay? Now, capacities, uh, you know, allow us to have emotional reactions to what happens around us, but the states are what determines, you know, the, the degree of the reaction and probably you know, maybe even what kind, right? Yeah, even what kind. Now, that is within your control. Now, it's not as if we could walk around saying, oh, I'm going to feel happy, I'm going to feel sad, I'm going to feel angry. Yeah. No, you can't do that. Yeah. How you affect these states is how you develop those habits. Right? These habits determine your state, what kind of thing that you are. So, you know, I'm walking around in Stonehenge 2 right about now. And it's, you know, it's kind of cool. It really is. Right? Um, I'm impressed by the work that's been done here. Okay. Now, uh, you know, an excess, ex you know, an excess of enthusiasm would probably be what something like, "Oh my God! Wow, this place is so cool! I'm gonna move here!" Right? That's overboard. That's really overboard. Right? You know, a deficiency would be something like, "Meh, I'm gonna go spray paint a stone." Right? That would be a deficiency of an enthusiasm or or, or, or care. Now, the, you know, the state that I am in, you know, this, this appropriate reaction, this, this middle, this mean reaction, this middle ground reaction of, wow, this is really neat, and, and I'm enjoying the architecture, I'm enjoying this, this Stonehenge 2 around me, right, that's developed out of the habits that I've developed, right, through time and bitter experience, I've learned that, ah, is too much and meh, is too little. And that takes, that takes a lot. It takes a lot of experience. It takes a mind. You have to develop your intellectual capacities in order to properly determine the mean for that, for that, for that reaction. Right. So the state that I am in is a result of the habits that I've developed. And this is what is good or bad. This is what contributes to the pleasure or pain, the happiness or misery in my life. So this is in, this is what the, this is in what the virtues lie, is developing these habits 
so I can develop the kind of state and what I am, which means I will lead a good life. 